Hello, and you're listening to Let's Drone Out. Today is the usual Thursday. It's 8pm, and we are once again all together. Frank is unfortunately still a little bit under the weather, and we'll probably need another week. Get better soon, Frank. Thank you to everyone who's popped into the chat and patiently waited for us. Tonight we are joined by the man with the moustache, Stephen. Hello. My darling wife, Tony. I Who's thought we put Tony on top for a change there. You're muted, dear. <laughs> Bonjour. And I am Bright to Life Fly, and a special guest who's funny enough not a host tonight because they're talking their way through their adventures in Taiwan. My buddy, Cole. Howdy. Now, um, I never, I never thought I'd see this day, you know, <laughs> where, you know, someone's sleeping in the room next to me, keeping me up at night snoring, um, <laughs> just generally being chippy and Canada and how you're doing and everything. And like lived in, you should have seen the fear of like, what is this drone? It doesn't fly itself to a little... Yeah whoop and now and now what are you because i don't recognize <laughs> you i don't know who you are <laughs> yeah well i i do remember that time you gave me the transmitter like yeah just just try out this little tiny whoop in the house and like i couldn't even let it i can't even get it to hover it was just fucking flipping out everywhere pardon my french there but uh dude i was like i was so scared of those i was like i'm never flying those things again <laughs> yeah that was that was crazy. No, you're jet yeah. setting and flying Sorry? all over the place. You're jet setting and flying oh, yeah. all over the place. Long range. I know. Or mid range, shall we say, but certainly not just uh, proximity. Definitely gone yeah. beyond that. Yeah, I'm, uh, well, I don't know, man. It's crazy. Like with the Mavics originally, it's like, you know, you can trust them to go out a reasonable distance. But with like a five inch freestyle quad without a GPS and without any of the sort of safety things, you don't really want to send it out too far because, you know, likely chance you're not getting it back if something goes wrong, right? So, um, yeah, I don't know, man. It was like, if, if, if I have a crazy place that I can go out and fly that has the scenery to do so, I, I'd probably like to send it out a little further than, you know, 20 meters or 100 meters at most. But, yeah. Uh, it's been pretty. It was pretty cool uh, flying out there. Actually, I'll probably be able to show you guys some clips. I, I've actually put out two videos uh, since being back, and uh, yeah, pretty freaking crazy place to be flying, man. I'll tell you that much. Like basically the jungle, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I actually don't even really have words for it. Like I'm still in awe that I got to fly these places. Like it's, it's pretty unbelievable. Cool, cool, cool. Maybe show us a couple. Yeah, for show sure. I'm trying to think. So, what should I show first? I, I guess I can. We can do a little playback from uh, from the couple of videos that I put out so far. Let me see if I can just pull them up here. Um, I, uh, what I'll suggest is, editor, if you're listening to this, uh, if Cole posts the links to what he's been playing. Hmm. Uh, yeah. in the description after the show and then anyone uh, listening uh, to this and you know we'll try and get Cole to describe everything that's happening but then you want to get the links wanna... in the yep. chat as well yeah. Yep, yep. yeah Cole I don't know if anyone else is hearing this but I've got a bit of static and crackling off your mic when you're talking oh, oh do you I think it's I Jack cutting something is it, is it Jack I there's think some it, yeah. sizzle. There's some sizzle coming through, and there's huh. a little bit of a now, crunchiness. How, is is mine? Maybe mine's still a little bit too loud. I could turn it down a little bit. You're, yeah. you're okay now. It just sounded a little bit like shh. I was getting a little bit of that through. Yeah, I didn't get any of that. Oh, weird. Yeah, that's just then okay. there was like a, a yeah. That's crunch. not me. I hear it too, so it wouldn't be me. 
shall I talk and see if it's me? Uh, mute Tony and see if it stops, I guess. <laughs> Some, someone's got like, it, it's, it sounds like a slightly dirty connection in the audio chain somewhere, like something's not quite. By well, now we're all muted except me and I. it's not here. It's one of hello, Tony hello. and Cole. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, Tony. hello. Tony. Yeah, so. me? yeah you're, you're, you're okay now. Sweet. Or maybe maybe the, the gremlins have gone away now. Who knows? <laughs> oh, oh buying contact cleaner and de you could buy deoxir. You'll you'll I think you can because you're all in North America. We well, can't he's back from Taiwan. I'd he's probably got a, a suitcase of stuff that we can't buy over here. <laughs> yeah, there there were you know what the main things I wish I could have brought back was actually food. <laughs> like uh the food over there is is unbelievable, man. Like you're getting fresh vegetables out of the garden every day. Like, especially like if you're up in the mountains and stuff, it's like you see the big garden. It's like a vegetable garden, like half the size of like a soccer field almost. Well, maybe that's an exaggeration, but just like a few cabbages, just in case. Just a couple. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. don't just have to go to the time. grocery store for that. Do they have monkeys? Oh, man. Do they have monkeys? They have baboons. And well, let's just say monkeys this. Monkeys are I, amazing. I, I will I will say this. The countryside baboons that are just oh oh that's you, Tony. I think that's Tony. Sizzling and fizzling. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's Tony, all right. <laughs> I just muted him. <laughs> yeah. So um so I will say the countryside baboons that are like I, I call them the natural baboons or like the natural monkeys that are in nature. They're super cool, man. They do their own thing, they stay away from you, they you know, they, they might be a little curious, but they're not really coming up to you. Whereas, basically, like I say, there's natural monkeys and then there's crackhead monkeys. The crackhead <laughs> monkeys are like the monkeys that hang out. Like, it, it, think of crackheads in a city. They hang out by the convenience stores on the corner. Mm -hmm. They're begging for stuff. processed sugar. Yeah. Trying to, yeah. you know, grab things from your hands. You know, no questions asked. They'll just jump on you. Um yeah, so I, I don't mind the natural monkeys, but the crackhead monkeys, they need to get the F away from us because two of them actually jumped at my girlfriend and I was like actually like almost ready to fight two monkeys. It was it was crazy. <laughs> it was, uh, I mean, uh, yeah. It sounds like know. me and Tony, same species, but different attributes. <laughs> One's definitely way more crackhead. Than it's the all other. about the conditioning, man. It's, uh, it's about that nurture, isn't it? Nature yeah. versus nurture. Yeah, totally. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I actually, I got to, I was so in uh, in the countryside at uh, at Grandpa's place. He actually has monkeys just in the backyard, like they're up in the trees. And there's one baboon that's actually um, banished from like the the pack. He's a like a lone. He's like a la a lone baboon where he kind of just hangs away out by himself. And I actually was able to get probably within uh, like. 10 meters of him like he was really close to me not even 10 meters maybe five meters and uh i got to get some really cool photos of him actually he was almost like posing for me he kept like changing his pose and i'm like snub he's he was like my little model actually it was really <laughs> hilarious have you seen their teeth <laughs> oh their teeth could really mess you up yes, really mess they're, you they're up they're quite strong have you, did you see that monkey who ripped that woman's face off yeah yeah ripped her face off i'm like Hannibal Lecter style. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Well, the crazy thing about the ones at, at Grandpa's place out there was it was like chilling just in like the tree, air, low tree area just beyond where the garden is. And I'm like trying to snap over. I'm like trying to get a little bit closer, a little bit closer. But then he starts trying to get a little closer to me and he's kind of like squaring up. Like he's trying to show down. So then I'm having to stand a little taller and like puff my chest out. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like shit, I hope he doesn't come any closer. <laughs> like, oh man. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was interesting. But uh yeah, just like Audio Gex says, yeah, not going anywhere near wild monkeys, crackhead or not. Too much YouTube videos. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was my first experience that close to a monkey. I'll just put it there. And uh I don't know. I like I said, there's there's good monkeys, there's bad monkeys, just like uh, you know. Humans. Let's throw it out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's throw it out members. You know, I'm just kidding. Um <laughs> But yeah, um, so I guess back to the so on on the uh, flying because I gather there was no flying around monkeys because that would be 
that would be dangerous especially you had a like a long range seven inch just remind us of your build you were like yep. opening up this brand new build weren't you yeah yeah it's uh so it's a um a rad lion if you guys know who falcon rad is a canadian long range guy uh he makes a frame called the rad lion it's a seven inch quad um so basically that frame actually i got as almost like a it wasn't a hand me down it was like a pass me down from um a friend of falcon rad's who's a friend of mine and um so i guess falcon rad gave him the frame he ended up giving me the frame and uh so basically it's actually the frame that i have is actually like a beta version it was an earlier version of the frame so but uh yeah it's a, it's an awesome frame it's it's meant for uh, lithium ion packs like it's kind of made for that but you can definitely strap a lipo on there just not too long of a lipo um yeah, yeah quite, i was running quite a short lipo specifically because you were looking you had like 100 mil right 10 centimeters well, 11 centimeters well, you know what? I was actually, I, I measured it wrong. I was measuring it from the first or the second set of bolts on the top plate when really the, the GoPro mount is actually further up. So I, I, I actually had about another centimeter and a half or so to play with. So I could chuck like a, if, if it's like 12 centimeters, that might be like the the tops, I'd say. But um, so yeah, so it's a Rad Lion 7 inch running uh, Kiss Ultra V2, uh, T Motor, uh, F55. Uh, ESC, so the V2 version, uh, T motor, uh, what are they? The F90, uh, 1300 KV motors. I think it's like 2806.5s. Um, Rush Solo tank on the VTX. Um, what else? Uh, I saw running a diversity crossfire, so barred pole antenna and uh, Mortal T and GoPro Hero 11 mini. What else? Uh, I think that's everything that goes in the quad what battery uh, do you end up flying it with ah so actually um if you guys ever watch um what is his name the guy who does all the super in-depth review stuff um he also makes for chris rosser chris rosser um so he calls them gold line batteries and i've always called them o-line but i didn't do the math on it realizing AU is the periodic element, uh, whatever symbol for gold. So every time he's talking about these batteries, I'm like, why are you calling them gold line? It's A U L I N E. But I figured it out. Uh, but yeah, so basically, I was flying um, these O line 4,000 milliamp hour packs, uh, 6S. They're, uh, they're rated to 45 amp constant. So they're actually one of the higher rated lithium ion packs you can get. Um, I don't know exactly what cells are inside them. Uh, I, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's listed, but yeah, they're. I mean, as far as I know, uh, my little knowledge here, like they're pretty good. They worked for me, so I still How did have it my feel drum. compared to your freestyle quad. Well, I don't know how it feels compared to my freestyle quad, but I know how my freestyle quad feels compared to it. Because <laughs> I was flying long range mainly. That was or I was flying my seven inch mainly, right? And then when I went to go fly my five inch freestyle quad, I was like, shit, dude, like I'm going so fast and my rates are crazy and I got to like relearn how to fly this again. And it was almost like kind of scary, to be honest, like the seven inch quad is like super chill. Go for like some nice cruising and like, you know, with a lithium ion pack, you're not you're not running crazy amps through it. Right. So um, you're not trying to pull uh, crazy amps, I should say. Um, you didn't have to force yourself to slow down because I, I imagine I, I'd be tempted and be like, let's just rattle bunch. You didn't have any of those well, urges. You had to be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, look, my voltage is at two point something now. Well, the, the weird here's the weird thing. Um, I had a few. I actually had some really scary. Um, I had a, I, my, my first test flight out there, I had a really scary experience, a couple of really scary experiences, actually. Um, and it, it could have been so fatal that I wouldn't have had a quad to fly the rest of the trip. So I guess I'll, I'll start with that. So the day we go out or the day before we're going out to the countryside, I go to my known sort of like home base spot that I can fly and do some testing because basically I wanted to just test my return to home, make sure everything's because I hadn't even set up return to home before I went out there. Um, it was my first time yeah, doing all that. But so, you never tried tested it, did you? Well, yeah, I had it set up, but I didn't do any testing. That's right. You're right, I mean, Jack. that's what they tell you, right? Like when you build a long range quad with GPS, don't test it because it takes all the fun out of it and you're just <laughs> bored, bored on the day. Nothing interesting happening. The excitement is gone. <laughs> 
Well, you're listening to this, do the opposite of what Stephen just said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, so so basically, so I go out to the spot. It was like just before, like a little bit before sunset, like maybe an hour before sunset. So I'm like, okay, I got plenty of time. I got two batteries. I just want to test return at home, and just see it come back to me. That's all I wanted to do. Uh, so I set some values in in the Kiss GUI and and I I set it up to how I thought it would be fine. Um, but this was the weirdest thing. So, um, actually, I, should I embarrass myself here? Maybe I'll embarrass myself a little bit. Okay. That's so, fine, uh, no, yeah. So basically, I. I fly old school stuff because it's kind of what I was taught from Jack, I guess. It was what everyone keeps telling me. Oh, it's old Jack school. It's down. old school. Yeah. Uh, so I, I fly idle up or that's what it is, right? Idle up, right, Jack? Yeah. So I was basically like, you know, I set my quad up for idle up and I was then told on the internet by, by, you know, anybody who is on the internet, like, what are you doing flying idle up? And the idle up value needs to be higher. It's already a seven inch quad. So whatever. So I was like, okay, fuck it. I'm, I, I put my idle up, uh, just, just a little bit higher. So instead of it being like 1060 or 1070, it was like, I put it to 1080 or whatever on the, on the throttle thing. Well, little did I freaking forget how I set things up in my radio. So I go to, I go to do my test flight. And I'm like, okay, cool. It's flying great. Go to do a flip. My quad like du dead ducks and like is just going to follow this guy. And then because when the throttle goes to zero, there's no freaking pid loop. Right. So I made a serious mistake there. It was like ridiculous. It, it's called We're potato mode. We're not flying multi wee anymore, you guys. Just quit screwing with idle up. It's like trying <laughs> to go everywhere on one leg just because you feel yeah. like it. It's like oh, when you can walk. You've, you've got to, like, not to make excuses, right? I, Stephen, I value your opinion. You're a very smart guy. But Everyone's telling what me it was too. is Cole was, you know, when you first start flying FPV, you're the only person, you're the only FPVer in the village, aren't you? Right? And the thing is, is that Cole's out there and you don't know what influence he's going to get out there or the people that are going to meet. And I'm he, remotely trying to teach him everything that I know. And the whole yeah. idea of it is, is I learn it. And the incident that springs to mind is when Tony said, flip my board 180 degrees. And I was like, that's not going to work. Mm. Cause my gyro was broken, but it's the ability to take your settings from your own quad and then put it onto someone else's to know it will work. So it yeah. meant that Cole could play around, fiddle with stuff, and learn. And if he couldn't get back to it, he could then just take my settings. Yeah. And in my defense, Cole, I did <laughs> warn you about it. I said, I use Idle Up. It's a bit long-winded. No, like, not many people use it. And I did give the forewarning. But we both yeah, yeah. agreed. Totally. We both agreed yeah. that he was know, like, I'm, I'm, this is a if joke. it works... This is like the latest in the the joke saga that is Jack's kind of litany of <laughs> idle up excuses, and I don't <laughs> expect it to be rational. I don't. I'm not even really condemning that you is, at this point. It it's is. just like here's this weird thing that you do, and once again, it's caused this whole like hey, no, hey, it, it didn't cause it. It, it, it wasn't his. Understanding. <laughs> I, I will defend Jack. It wasn't him that caused the drama. It was me changing a value and doing something stupid without even thinking. So, but I don't know. It's weird because everyone talks so much shit about idle up, but like my quads are so handy, flown fine, and and yeah. I, I can do my yeah. I can do my pre arm, and you know, it's just kind of not needed. It's like, do you ever remember having a really basic car when you had to like pull the clutch, you had to pull the um the whatever out choke. to like choke out yeah. to get yeah, yeah. the engine richer. And everyone's like, oh, I'm going to need that because I need to be able to start my car properly. And people would like complain and say, oh, yeah, I've got to have that I'm gonna have manual choke because otherwise it's not going to work. And that's just kind of no. not yeah. true so, anymore. So as someone who's completely ignorant, then can someone just completely lay it out straight? Like, what is the best and newest thing for arming your quad? <laughs> not Air that. Mode. Yeah. Air mode. Yeah, air mode. Yeah. Which just oh, you are specifically the like, runs. like a no. smart air mode. 
a M mode comes in when you go over a certain throttle percentage, so it doesn't start do going crazy on the ground. But most implementations are like air mode is going to cut in when you're over 10% throttle for a couple of seconds, mm -hmm. and then you're in air mode. Isn't that basically the same thing as idle up, though? You flick a switch yeah, you, and then... You don't it... need to do it on the radio. It just The quad just yeah. does it. The quad oh, true, is, true. Okay. Yeah. So your okay, radio okay, so is it... just simple. Just leave it up to the flight controller. Yeah, or, you uh, don't need a switch. Yeah, okay, okay. You just have like an arm switch and you take off. Good to go. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. that's it. Yeah. The, the, like, the, the weird thing is, is like back in the day... There used to be this thing where if you were flying beta flight, you'd come in and you'd go to land on the ground and the quad would bounce and you would ne then mm. get sort of like an erroneous. If you come in and landed really hard, the there used to be this thing where the pid loop would do the sort of spin, like fight to recover, which mm. could be dangerous. Start, start from the olden days. When me and Tony were first flying, when you were racing, if you clipped a gate, mm. your quad, you just used to disarm because there was never any way of recovering. Just going, <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. when when Boris like basically started forking the code and then added a notch filter, then quads became really a lot easier to fly. And then we started noticing you'd clip a gate your cord would spin for a bit, but then it would stay in the air and settle out. Huh. And it's that that initial like filtering. But now the filtering's so good that yeah, you know when yeah. when Kiss first come out, that was the noticeable thing. You would have air mode on, you'd come into land, and it would just land flat and just go like that and not yeah. bounce. Yeah. With beta fly, it's hard. I'm sorry, I know if you're listening to this on audio, yeah, you used get to do the, a lot of the little little bunny hops there. Do, 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 yeah. do. Yeah. yeah, and they, they, that's been solved as well. But yeah, the, yeah. there's the, those issues of what you're fighting. There's yeah. there's yeah. something called like easy landing now, which just like does a, a suspiciously smooth settle. <laughs> huh. Yeah, that's cool. And then you never used to have stuff like soft, soft start motors, so you'd mm. arm, and then if if you're if you happen to be on a tough to bit of tougher grass that your m m a motor can overcome. Mm. It would jam it, and basically uh, your throttle would jam up, and then you know we didn't have such beefy fets or incredible as many caps, and then you'd oh, smoke yeah. in the SC after a while, which Tony yeah. also yeah, and also you'd have stuff like it would damage the caps, so then you'd be more hmm. susceptible towards spikes, and then randomly you'd do a punch out, and then your VTX would fry for no oh, reason. Yeah. Oh, and shit. it turns out that some of your caps, you know, you would go with multimeter and you'd continuity across them, and then you'd find some of them had a direct short because yeah. the tantalums had melted. Just because they got too hot, yeah. 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 Huh. So, but you're, yeah, yeah. you're, you don't live in that world anymore. You wouldn't need no. to. There's people, you know, there's people that I've helped with quads who've come around mine and I do some stuff and I kind of know where to look. It was like you, you were like, Oh my quads just won't lift off the ground. I'm like, it's low battery. And you're like, how do you know that? And it's just <laughs> stuff that you don't have to deal with anymore because you know, you'd literally plug it in and it would your quad now tells you like low battery, automatic telemetry, shit like yeah. that. Like yeah. legacy of bullshit, like moron threshold. Like no one <laughs> would know other yeah. than I mean like ask Tony about the PID loop, the the <laughs> Yeah, you've made your <laughs> argument quad Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. And now okay, you've, okay. Got, so, you've got these basic yeah. things, but they've all got what you've got there is like a manual coping mechanism. And now all of those coping mechanisms you used to have as workarounds, those all got put into the code. So the code just does all those coping just mechanisms now instead yeah. of you as an operator having to like remember to do Worry this, about that, it. the other. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so back to my story, I guess. So so I'm I'm doing all this stupid shit. I'm like I'm like, why is my quad being being so weird? So then, then I have a little like. All of a sudden, I I have a little thing in my brain because like, I always take screenshots bef uh, of my before changes and my after changes, or I save them, you know, kind of thing. Wonder where you got that habit from? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so basically, um, I I knew I had a backup of of my settings or a, or a screenshot, and then I looked back and I was like, oh shit, 
this is the one thing that is wrong. So I change it. Boom. Quads fine. It's all good. So mm -hmm. then I'm like, okay, sweet. Back to my return to home testing. So it was like, I go out and all of a sudden my quads flying like shit and I don't know what's going on. So then I fix it. Then I'm testing return to home and, and, and everything's fine. Wait, are you um, testing return to home in the jungle at this point? No, or? no, 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 no. So basically uh, where I stay in the city, just outside of the city, there's like basically this like almost like industrial tech area that has like a big open field. That's like the middle of nowhere. Uh, that's where I'm kind of doing my testing. Um, but uh, okay. So now I'm moving on to re uh, testing return to home. I have my return to home throttle value set. I have my, you know, how much it's going to go up before it starts to come home, yada, yada. Um, so in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, I'm flying lithium ion pack. So I'm not going to have my return to home throttle value, whatever, too high because these lithium ions can't take too much, you know, uh, as far as amp draw. So I found out, uh, actually, thanks to Alexander Fedorov from Kiss Ultra, that my setting was too low because I would flick the switch, set return to home, and first it's going to go up. Well, he, he's actually written it in the code that if it doesn't get to your set height within, I think he said either 10 or 20 seconds, it goes fucking balls to the wall and it go, it, it's going to get to that height. Well... That started scaring the shit out of me because my throttle <laughs> throttle was too low. And then this lithium ion pack's just going to the moon. And I'm like, no, like it can't handle this much current. Um, so that scared the shit out of me. And then I talked to him and he's like, yeah, dude, just like put the number a little higher. It's going to get to that height quicker and it's not going to start going balls to the wall. I was like, oh, well, beautiful. Thank you. There's like, <laughs> if I would have known that, I would have, like, I kept trying to put the number lower. I'm like, oh no, like what's going on? But really I had to put the number higher. So yeah, I, I learned something and it wasn't from Joshua Bardwell. Um, but, or, uh, me. or Jack. Bad yeah. Habits. Bad yeah. habits of, uh, what is it? Idle up the sin well, of idle up. That's ah, fine. I still like idle up, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, so, so that, okay. So that's all good. So, so my quad is not, you know, the, the pit loop is still activated when my throttle's down. Good. There's one thing solved. Uh, I've set the value of uh, the ascending value for the return to home, whatever. And now it's not just like burning out my lithium ion pack. Great. So now I'm actually uh, just, you know, do, doing some return to home tests, all good, whatever. Well, so if you guys have a Tango 2, basically, or if you know what a Tango 2 switches are set up, like it's like there's a three position switch on the left with a, uh, with a two position switch on the right of the left hand side of the controller. And then it's basically mirrored on the other side. Well, I'm a complete freaking idiot. And in the middle of, uh, in the middle of return to home, like I, I basically, I, I went up, I press return to home. It's coming home. Cool. Like it's basically not too far away from me. So I'm like, okay, it's, it's working. That's all I need. Uh, I don't need it to land for me. I just need it to come back to me if I lose video and then I get video again. Well, silly old me, I go to flick off return to home. And actually, my brain is reversed, and I fucking disarmed my quad from like a hundred meters up. Yeah, scary. Yeah. Did you rearm yeah. it in time? Back on? No, no. I, and my goggles, all I just see is. Oh man! And it was the actually the most terrifying thing that's ever happened to me this entire time I've ever flown quads. Like I. Like even right now, I'm like my heart is like kind of beating a little fast thinking about it because it actually scared the fucking shit out of me. Did you land on something soft then, like a, a child or something? <laughs> well, okay. hey, so so here's here's there's more into the story. I I wonder if I can pull up a picture because, like I said, there's it's all it's all kind of a field area around me, but then there's also like a lot of concrete around mm -hmm. me too because I said I'm in an industrial area. Yeah, well, and hopefully you landed on someone soft. <laughs> well. If it weren't for these three bare trees that were short and and scraggly, my and 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 I, and I didn't land, you know, five meters or five or ten feet to the right or left, and I was on the concrete, I wouldn't have had a seven-inch quad anymore. Let's put it that wow. way. Wow, well done. Yeah, all, nothing broke. Fail safe. All, all that I broke was uh, was was a prop, one prop. So wow, literally like for hundred meters. I yeah I, I have to check it might even be more. <laughs> well <done. laughs> yeah yeah. Lucky so boy. Rad Lion seven inch. It's uh, durable. 
Um, but yeah, no, it, I, I wish I could pull up the picture. It, but yeah, it, it was terrifying where I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm putting this drone away or like, no, I put, I put new props on the drone still flew. Okay. I'm done. I'm, do you have the DVR I'm, of that? That would make a pretty awesome little short. If you yeah. Do that. you want me to, well, yeah, let me see if I can find it. Well, I mean, it if you put it to hand, though. but you know, if we could put it in the video description, if you've got it, you know, I I'll, I'll see if I can retrieve it at some point. Yeah. But that was, uh, honestly like it was like like low-key traumatizing because i don't know if that's ever happened to you guys have you ever just seen your quad fall from the sky from yeah really yeah I've, I've had the same thing where i was trying to like change flight modes and my brain just farted and i hit the disarm switch yeah that's exactly what i did because oh, I because know. again this is like my first time is pressing return to home on my radio so i guess i wasn't thinking i was already kind of probably stressed out about the two other issues i was having with the quad um and then that happened but then the drone worked and i was fine i'm like okay nothing's broken still works calling it a day here and uh and that was my that was my test phase of uh return to home in you know in a foreign country trying to make sure my shit works properly so not it's fun not fun all at all fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah let, let's just say that we'll say that all good fun but mm -hmm. so whatever so that that's the that's the kind of scary uh traumatizing bit well the next day we're um we're going up to to the countryside now we're we got in the car we we went on like a two-hour drive and uh dude i'm like actually like nervous my heartbeat went up talking about that dude like i'm actually like like it, it actually gave me it gives Someone me anxiety thinking about out. it let him, uh, you know, like just mop the brow, continue on. Yeah, yeah. It like it actually still scares me thinking about it. But okay, so um, okay, so now, so so we're going to the countryside. We get there, and it's about like maybe four o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm like, shit. Well, I want to charge up a pack because essentially the whole reason for me building that seven inch quad was because I wanted to reach this mountain peak sort of in the distance that I could see from from grandpa's place out there. And uh, I only had my five inch quad last year. So that wasn't going to obviously, um, you know, do the trick. Uh, so we got there, I charged up a pack and now I can actually show you guys this, um, this little video here, share screen. So you guys can see that. All right. Full screen. Yeah. Looking back on it, you, you know, him. you you said about, yeah. um, you know, you were you were shocked at how close it was. Do you yeah. think you could do it with your five, with a five inch? To be honest, I wouldn't trust uh, uh, the battery on it. I could do it video transmitter and radio, yeah, but battery wise, I'd have to ch throw on a bigger battery. I think. Yeah. I mean, you could get there, but then uh, you've got to get back. So yeah, hiking up a mountain to find it. Yeah, so basically, long story short, like I get there, I charge up a pack, and I'm like, I have enough light. I'm gonna go to the top of this hill that I wanted to do a year ago, and literally, like, first pack, first try, like, it, I, I did it. It was Wait. like it was nothing. It was easy. Um, and like I had good line Ooh. of sight. It was getting a little dark there, but uh, it was super moody out, man. Like the fog was rolling in. I think. I got to like 1.8 something kilometers to the top and, and whatever. But uh, for our audio listeners, when Cole says the fog is rolling in, he is not doing this justice. There is a <laughs> sea, there is a sea of fog climbing up the mountains. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it was pretty beautiful, man. Like honestly, even in the DVR, you look back. When I look back at it, I'm just like, I can't believe I did that. Like it looks so freaking cool. It looks so cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I mean that's basically the gist of this flight it was just like i want to go to the top i did it great and that that was pretty much it for that um i think and i just kind of explored around a little bit um not honestly nothing too crazy it was just like this was my first pack here period like this this trip so you know it, i wasn't trying to do anything too crazy but um then i came that's in for a landing eight. A different feel compared to what you get from a Mavic, right? You've got that oh flow, yeah flowiness, the smoothness to the flying. You just don't yeah. really get that when you're pushing a camera forwards and backwards, left and right. No, no, that's absolutely right. Like the um, 
it's a different type of type of experience man like i definitely prefer like mavic definitely has a it's it's place and it's it's a good tool but i don't know this is a lot more enjoyable and it's a lot more technical though obviously but um but yeah it was really cool like i, I came in for my landing I, I was giving a couple shout outs in this video to some of the people like i, I give a shout out to alexander from uh from kiss ultra because uh yeah, if it wasn't for him, my return to home would have killed my batteries, essentially. So um, that was pretty cool. Um, well thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. It, I was I basically landed. And I was like, well, shit, that was easy. I'm like, I didn't know it was going to be that easy. Um, so that was kind of the the first that was the, the first battery there. Then the next morning, which I'll, I guess I'll show you guys the next one. So basically, I go to sleep that night, maybe around like nine or ten o'clock. I wake up at like five in the morning. I'm just so excited because I already know what's I kind of know what's coming. Like I know that in the mornings, the weather in this place is like insane. Like you don't know what kind of weather you're going to get. You don't know if it's going to be like just a beautiful, glorious, sunny morning. You don't know if it's going to be like raining. You don't know. Like You don't know what you're going to get, but you know, there's probably a high chance it's going to be nice. Right. Um, so so I get up at 5 a.m. and I'm like, shit, well, there's not enough sun to do anything. So I start charging my packs, charge my radio a little bit, uh, get my GoPro ready, just get everything basically prepped. Um, and I think by around like 630, I kind of had all my stuff ready. Um, and I'm just and I'm, I'm looking outside. I'm like, shit, I think it's going to rain because there's like it, the whole sky was just covered in clouds, like really, like really shitty looking clouds. I'm like, well, that was a waste of charging batteries. I'm like. Now I got to discharge these batteries and, and whatever. Well, I'm glad that I, I didn't because I'll show you guys now. Basically around like 7.50 in the morning uh, is when I actually set this pack out. Um, well, actually, you know what? I'll I'll show the beginning of the video too because it shows a bit of the journey actually up to the, um, up to the countryside, which is kind of cool. And this is actually kind of like... Um, so this is me saying bye to my cats. And then we're in the airport. We're in the airplane. We've we've arrived in Taiwan. Um, you know, I'm actually so I went and stopped off at the at the local model shop to see my buddy who uh, he owns this model shop out there. It's called SD Model Taiwan. Um, and yeah, and then you know we're we're going through the countryside here, just driving through and uh, just paradise out there, man. Like I don't know, you guys can see all this, right? I'm hoping. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a little bit so jerky, just, but yeah, we've got some of it. Yeah, so like just paradise, man. Like, and then so this is that those hills right there are what I flew up to in the last video I just showed you. Um, so yeah, like uh, there's a little vlog in this, but it's like 6 a.m. I'm up, I'm I'm getting my shit together. Oh, the one of the really annoying things actually. So well, this is where I stayed. It kind of shows you guys the little compound area, but um this is, this is where I slept, super hard bed, but it's really good for the back. So, but dude, these are the only outlets they have there. They only have dual prong. They had no ground, grounded anything. And this is the only charger I had. For, and they're for outdoors? That. Yeah. Well, they're all indoors. They're outdoors. They're all, it's okay. all the same. Yeah. Um, but when you said these are the only outlets I had, I was like, well, they only have plugs outdoors. Oh, oh the only type of outlet, I should okay. say. Um, but luckily, uh, uh the the one uncle out there had this adapter but like i didn't know that for like a good couple hours and then he's like oh yeah i have this i'm like oh thank god uh because or else i wouldn't have been able to fly out there uh so let's see so all right so basically i go and i'm standing over by the vegetable garden it's like seven i think it was like 7 30 ish at this point and uh let me see i'll put the music should be fine uh so yeah so this is the vegetable garden i'm talking about and so i just take off but this is what i'm seeing it's like the fog's just kind of you know really low in the sky and this is actually flying the opposite direction as i was in the previous video so the other way is up the hills and this is like sort of in the valley um so i'm just cruising you know like i'm not doing anything crazy i'm just like i'm just this is my first pack of the morning the next day so um i'm actually just trying to see where i can fly for the most part i'm just trying to figure out where my flight paths are i'm trying to see where i have video where's like um yeah basically just just trying to figure out where uh where i can actually fly and 
I'm not even high up at all, but I'm with the clouds. I'm above the the fog here, which was really, really cool. Like first experience ever for me. I don't know if you guys have ever had that kind of experience before, but um, it, I don't know, man, there's something different about it. Like I, I mean, I don't, I never fly my quad like high enough where, like, especially here in Canada where I'm going to be above clouds. Cause that would just be like extremely irresponsible. Uh, but when you're in a, a place like this, where you're in the countryside, it's in a valley and you're not even that high up, like, and the clouds just were there. It's like, well, shit, man, I guess I'm going to fly over these. <laughs> yeah. I pretty much just made like a little cinematic edit kind of thing. Just, this is just the first pack kind of going around and I wonder how you interpret the, the law when you've got just so much undulating terrain. Are you technically supposed to like hug a hundred meters above every part of the terrain? That would be pretty difficult to figure out. Well, that was that is something that um, <laughs> you hear a lot of these long range guys say, like, you know, they're they're flying up a mountain or whatever, but they're only ever 10 meters off the ground. Right. So. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, I was never going up that high. I was I, I kept it pretty responsible for the most part, like um, especially in a foreign country, man, I'm not really trying to break any laws like I, I got my uh, I got my foreign operators license, registered my stuff. You know, I'm following the the drone map they have out there as far as like the different zones. There's green zones, yellow zones, red zones. Um, and and actually, I'll basically in a later episode, obviously, on Let's Run Out, I'll, I'll show you more stuff where I actually end up getting to fly in a national park. And uh, I, I actually I submitted an application and I got approval to fly in a national park. And it was actually I was flying at over 3000 meters altitude. It was insane. Um, and And that was a whole other thing. But. Yeah, it was it was really cool, man. It was um, well, yeah. But we can that'll be a, that's for another day, I guess. But but yeah, I guess that's a good question though, as far as interpreting, you know, the height and whatever from from terrain and whatnot. But yeah, I was I was definitely under 120 meters, so that's that's good. <laughs> Looks lovely. Oh man, Fantastic. I mean. Imagine you wake up in the morning at and you're you're up at seven thirty and you go up for a little fly like this. You put on some really chill music in the headphones and you just just go and explore. You know, like it's it's pretty unreal. It, it's pretty magical, honestly. Like mm. I don't know it. I don't yeah. even really have have words for it. I think the only place I've seen that's quite like that is I went to Sri Lanka a couple of years ago. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's the nearest thing I I can bring to memory bring to mind yeah well the, the cool thing about taiwan is that the south is tropical like the the, the, lo the lower half is tropical and the upper half is subtropical and here where i'm where i'm here is actually in the the tropical part of it and uh i mean clearly there's like um palm trees and stuff everywhere but uh yeah, it's just the kind of weather you get out there is just nuts. Like, it, especially in these sort of like mountain valleys and stuff, it's yeah. pretty freaking cool. Do you have the rain like rolling in in late afternoon? Like, as soon as the temperature drops, it just hammers down with rain, or is it pretty easy uh, going? Sometimes, sometimes it, it will come in, but you know, I got really lucky because I was there for I think five days and it didn't even rain once. And then the day afterwards, apparently, it was just pissing down. So, I just got super lucky. That looks awesome. And then I'm just uh, coming in for a landing. And I, it was weird because like a lot of people saw this and they messed me. They're like, man, how were you not sitting for that? I'm like, well, I didn't have a chair there. So, yeah. <laughs> and just walking back to the to the to the place where I was staying at. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Chill flight. How long was the flight? Is it same minutes? 11? Was that 11 minutes? No, that was round trip 11 something kilometers, but I think right. the average um I think the average flight time I was being really safe with the batteries like I think I was getting maybe like 15 to 18 minutes or something the flight time on like per pack. And the nice thing about lithium ions is you can fly them lower than lipos, right? Mm. So um that's pretty sweet. Uh although I so the I don't know if it's the next day or not, but I had actually a really, really terrifying scenario where I think I wonder if I can pull it up here. Um, let me see. Basically, long story short, I had uh, I, I went and I went to the top of that first 
sort of like hill mountain thing that I showed you for the first the first one there. Well, I ended up having total video loss for nine seconds at one point, and I somehow managed to like get my quad back. <laughs> so that was that was yes. I'm gonna have to pull the DVR. I gotta. I think I have it. I think I have it. I do have more DVR actually though. Do you guys want to see some more? Do you want to see some DVR? Yeah, why not? You have to talk us through it though. You're doing a good job. Yeah, I'm, people, I'm, people who listen will need, you know, want to want to hear, totally, what totally. hear what's going yeah, on. Yeah. Okay, let me see if I can get this over here. Okay. Oops. So I don't exactly know which day this is. I have this just exported, but um, let's see. So. I'm just trying to see what I'm so I'm, I'm here. I'm waiting for satellites. I'm just oh, okay. Actually, this is a pretty cool little starting part of the flight. So this is a, I think this may have actually been the same day, just maybe later in the day. Um, but as I'm just waiting for satellites and then and I'm still scoping out my flight paths. So I kind of know this way. So actually down this road, there's a huge hole in the road that from some kind of erosion, but I just like flew past it. Um, so I'm just kind of flying through, just kind of seeing where I can fly and whatnot. And then I found this cool little pocket through these trees. And I'm just like, zing, just kind of zip through those. It was kind of cool. Um, and, but yeah, I, I think this was the same day just later on in the day because it was, it was pretty kind of like a foggy day sort of thing. Um, let me see. Do I go? Oh, yeah. So then I'm going this way and then I hit the... I hit the uh, the bridge gap or whatever you want to call it, which is, you know, it's not that spectacular. At, but I was going like at, at, it, it looks way slower than it is, but I was going like 70, 80 kilometers an hour there, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, but I'm just basically just checking out the countryside. Um, maybe this is the one where, I, where a bird got my attention. Yeah. So I was flying and I got distracted by a bird that went in front of me. And you're probably not going to be able to see it too well over the DVR. It's probably right around here. Oh, yeah, you're not gonna be able to tell it's analog video, but I kind of got distracted by it, and I, I like, I went to go tra uh, kind of like follow it a bit, but then I was like, yeah, that's kind of boring. So then I, I go back over here. I'm just kind of like flying, sort of. Well, I was trying to fly beside the road, but apparently I was uh, slightly over it. But that's okay. There was no cars around, so. Um, but then I start losing video here and I'm like, oh, okay, I gotta go higher, gotta go higher up. Oh, oh, I can't see anything. I'm like, okay, someone put the channel on the right, uh, you know, they switched the channel back to the right uh one. So I'm just like flying over this little valley with the river and everything, like super chill. I'm going up and going up, and then all of a sudden, look at this. I didn't even mean for this to happen. I just I was just going up to get better video, and then now now this is happening. So I'm like, oh, this is uh another Can magic. We're not sure quite what's happening from oh. the DVR there. Oh yes, so I'm I'm climbing up, I'm climbing up, and then again, it's another sea of clouds, essentially, or sea of uh, sea of fog or clouds, you know, whatever you want to call it. And uh, now I'm flying above the clouds again, and I'm not even that high up. It's like it's just it's so cool. So then I'm I'm just kind of scoping stuff around. I got you know most of these kind of packs. I'm just I'm just seeing what I can see. It's not like I have any real intention. I'm just like. I want to see where I can go. I want to see where I can't go. Video started to get a little sketchy at the top of that hill. But I think it's because of how I was sort of tilted to the one side or rolled to the one side. Um, but I will say flying over top of fog and clouds like this is kind of weird because, I mean, it's, it's nice to have the GPS or whatever, but um, video signal does tend to get a little strange, I guess, when there's a, a you know a layer of like clouds. A bit of moisture in here. Yeah, like I'm I'm only I'm not, I'm not far from myself, but you can see it's like it's starting to get a little noisy. It's, it's not bad. It's not even bad at all in terms of, you know, breakup and, and especially analog breakup. But it was a bit weird. So I'm like, OK, I'm going to turn around now. And then I kind of just like dove down through Lovely. this little foggy part here and uh, just so chill. Oh, man, I, I can't really uh, I can't ex I can't express how chill it was flying there. Like it's just, it's, it's the total opposite of freestyle. Like you're just, you're chill. I mean, your heart rate is still going similar to freestyle, but you're just kind of cruising and, and it's just like, it's in a way kind of relaxing and almost like 
meditative, um, which sounds really strange, but yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. So, so that's that I'm kind of just going around, uh, hitting the, hitting the, uh, the gap there going up, seeing the clouds again. And just, this was a really shitty part actually. So, so I wanted to dive down cause I, I really wanted to do some sweet dives, but the, the problem with this terrain is that it's all trees really. And it's kind of strange lumps. So, um, and I have to be very careful about my video signal. So I'm here, I'm about to go try and do like a dive, but you'll see my video like just goes really bad, <laughs> like really bad. <laughs> where I can't see anything. I, but I, I know, I, I mean, I'm not like, I, I, I'm aware of how my quad is and I know how I need to orient it to get video back. But I mean, I lost uh, lock on my fusion there and then now it just came back. But um, yeah, that was, th those were definitely terrifying moments. <laughs> like, but it's still fun. It's pretty still... easy to lose orientation as well when you're up in a cloud. Look at this one. Okay, let's count the seconds here that I can't see. Okay, <laughs> let's see. So, let's see. So we'll count it from here. One. Oh, no. Like one, two, three. Four. Okay, maybe like three or four. Like three or it's four still, seconds. Like It's still scary, isn't it, when you, when you can't see? Yeah. It's... Still it enough is. time that you're completely drenched in sweat when the video does yeah. come back. Especially when you're far bit. out. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, is like, I guess you kind of grow accustomed to it in a way. Like, in a lot in a lot of ways, you almost know when your video is going to break up or how it's going to break up or what you need to do to get it to come back properly. A lot of times you just have to like roll, you know, like if you're rolled this way, and the orientation is weird, but then you roll back this way, then you might get video again, or maybe pitch a little more, or it just mm -hmm. like, yeah, it, it depends on like the, I guess the null points and then also the terrain. It's a bit of a. So what was your video of... antenna? You've got this giant bard pole for the crossfire. What was the video yep. one? Uh, so this is the true RC singularity. Yeah. Blame Canada. Yeah. 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 Um, what was it? VTX. Was it big, big wattage? Oh, no, no. This is just 800 milliwatts. 800. Yeah. Weren't you tempted to uh, let it rip and uh, to put out three, four watts and try and fight oh. it? Or do you oh. reckon that wouldn't actually help? Well, the thing is, for, for the way I was flying and for, for what I've seen other people are able to do with 800, I didn't feel the need to push it, the VTX anymore. Plus, like, I don't know. I don't want to necessarily... Don't out there. Yeah, there's, there's, not, there's not a lot of interference out here. anything. A hill still no. a hill. Well, yes, isn't it? You want yeah. the clouds. The yeah. The, the, the thing I mean, is, dude, people is... go like people go like 10, 20 kilometers on eight hundred milliwatts, man. So like if yeah. I'm if I'm only not, not in moisture soaking cloudy. Yeah. But you the, the thing is, is a, a hill a hill, it doesn't matter if you're a couple of milliwatt. Yeah, it's, you know, it's just gonna block watt. anyway. Hill is a hill, block, yeah. So. It and, might help cut and, through some of the foliage, but that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but then if he's doing that, why don't he just switch over to like 1.8 or whatever, you know, or yeah. 2.4? Oh, and I'm standing the wrong way, of course. Because oh, the weird thing was I had to like keep turning myself a little bit. Because if I'm flying to the right through that thing, I got to turn that way. But then mid flight, if I'm going to the left, I'm having to like shuffle my body over. It's kind what, of what you should have done has been like, who's got some, uh, some a ladder and some some webbing straps and just climb that <laughs> telegraph pole and just fly yeah. to the, top of the telegraph sat pole on the roof sat on the roof yes yeah that Man, would have one of those cables Whew. oh you know what i actually almost hit one of them uh unknowingly um and that was actually pretty scary but uh are the people that do the telegraph wiring as like gung ho as they are in mainland china because i saw a few of them in mainland china and they were just stuff they do up telegraph poles was insane they'd be like one dude standing on the wire fixing another <laughs> bit of wire yeah i don't know that doesn't sound uh very good that i think india is the worst for that man the amount oh, of people no, no. I've, I, I've seen india i think india and china are about on a par when it comes to safety like i've seen a dude poking his head out of a manhole in the middle of a crossroads without any of the cars stopping it was just like <laughs> oh, wow working. yeah no way Way. way that's that's nuts yeah actually um so i ended up actually doing a live rip 
while I was out there on um, uh, basically with the Canadian guys, the podcast I do with the Canadian guys. And uh, that was actually really, I wonder if I can show it too, because that was actually pretty cool. Um, it was my last pack there. I actually had to leave like right afterwards, but um, let me see if I can find it. it. It was really, it was actually really cool. I got to, I got to friggin' fly out there and, uh, and show it and talk about it at the same time. It was like, it was pretty cool. Let me see. Um, I mean, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's like the most exciting, um, like the beginning flights, like, it looks really cool, but it's not like super high adrenaline rush kind of flying. Right. Like, um, but it's definitely beautiful. I will say that. Did the it. times line up better? I suppose it would, yeah, because we're like 8 p.m. So I yeah, don't yeah, suppose so... you would have been able to chat to us. No, no. It, uh, it ended up being that it was 10 in the morning for me when it was 9 p.m. Well, technically 9 p.m. for them, I guess. I think. Where the heck is this? I can't find it. Uh Sorry, guys. Just bear with me for a second here. Um, have you guys been up to any flying at all? or yeah. No. I was, I was saying at the start of the show, it was beautiful and sunny, but I actually went out for a walk and marveled at the warmth falling on my face uh, and didn't <laughs> think of actually flying. Oh, shit. Yeah, we had our first day of spring, and it was absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, so this is, um, this is from the live stream with... Uh, with Marcel off axis, uh, Falcon rad, uh, Dan Zilla, Luke flies good kid FPV. We actually had Zoe FPV on this one too, cause it was a 3d, uh, live stream. So it was a bunch of 3d pilots on this one. Nice. Um, and, um, there's me with my super long hair, which has now been cut and, uh, just sending out the quad and yeah. So that was, that was pretty cool. Um, I think you guys pretty much already seen everything that I've done here. Uh, oh, there's some bad video, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty much, you know, the same as with the stuff I was showing you guys, but yeah, it was just, just super cool, man. Super cool. But I, I will say I, I really feel rusty with the freestyle stuff and I need to get back on the sim. I see Clive saying he's been in the sim and I got to get back in the sim just to relearn those, uh, those fast flip tricks and stuff. Now you're back home in Canada. Are you tempted to try any long range? I thought I was just going around to ask, where you yeah. are. <laughs> around where I am is uh, well, well, maybe a hundred miles or so from where you are. Obviously, you're in the city, but well, I mean, I'm on the outskirts here. But to be honest, I mean, if I was to, it would be really boring because it's just flat farmland out here. So I bet that's I what the people in Taiwan would tell you. Like, why are you flying out here? It's just farmland. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is, I I, I want to say flying out there almost like in a way ruins it for me out here because I'm like, unless there's a bando or unless there's a construction site or unless there's something cool to fly, nothing can top those locations, man. Like, I mean, there are some nice tree spots around here. There are some cool stuff for like freestyle, but you as can't far look as, at like, a pine tree and get excited. You're like, that's just a pine tree. That's not. That's well, cool. yeah. After flying, you know, over those damn freaking palm trees, man. It's like, but I, you know, I, I still do. I still do like flying here. I just, I, I have to find good spots to fly. Whereas, like over there, it's like every spot is a good spot. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's nice flying abroad. Mm. Everything is new when you don't live there. Oh, Clive's saying, cool, you need to meet up with Falconrad. Yeah, man, that'll be friggin' awesome. I um so I was actually talking to uh to Marcel off Axis, uh, who runs the 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 other podcast that we do on Tuesday nights. And uh I don't know, like there he at one point he was talking about maybe having some people out to out to that side of Canada, you know, in the spring or in the summer or something and I don't know, man. If I can fly with those guys, I'll definitely do that. Because, yeah, because uh, off-axis, he flies with Falcon around all the time. So, I don't know, man. Fingers crossed. Those guys I, those guys know what they're doing. So, it's uh, definitely would love to learn and uh, sort of see how the pros do it. I, I might... Ha oh, so you know what? I, I can actually show... Let me see what I can show. Um, I guess I could show... 
I'm trying to think. There's a there's a few things I want to show, but I also have like a I have to find it. Sorry, guys, bear with me for a sec here. Um, no, it's not that. Are you soldering, Jack? He's muted. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that wisp of smoke says yes. Yeah. <laughs> So, well, there is one thing, actually, I will say. So I'll, I'll show you this uh, this tiny little mount of DVR that I have. So I flew at, I remember I told you guys I flew at this spot that was like um, like over 3,000 meters altitude, right? Um, well, for some freaking reason, my Fat Shark DVR got corrupted. And I'm really pissed about that because that's like my pride and joy is my DVR. <laughs> but, yeah, fat uh, Sharks don't work over 3,000 meters, mate. <laughs> that one. yeah yeah but so i had um i had this like external monitor and it had low battery but it, it like he got my buddy got a couple clips on it so I'll, I'll show you the few the few clips that i have here um so as you see takeoff altitude is like 3200 meters Ooh. ridiculous um, but i get that throttle an extra 10 percent just to be safe and then my buddy's my buddy was driving and then i was like okay well i'm gonna oh, really? follow you for like for like one second, but but I only I only followed him for like one second. I was like, I'm like, I don't really want to go over the roads if other cars come. But uh, oh, oh, audio. Sorry, guys. Ouch. Ouch. Um, we didn't hear nothing. Uh, you weren't. Yeah, you weren't sending us the audio. It's cool. The so this is like really vibrant up there. I don't know how the GoPro would be, but on the DVR, no, it, it's luminous. You know what it is? It's actually the saturation in the monitor in the monitor. Oh, OK. Um, it just looks really saturated, but it didn't look like that. But, um, dude, like my quad, put it this way. My quad was flying like kind of shitty. It's, it's a little bumpy. Um, it, it, it doesn't look too bad from the DVR, but, um, yeah, let, let, put it this way. A quad definitely flies a little different at 3000 meters altitude. You've got less air to move, huh? So everything mm -hmm. needs to be tuned up. You need to a faster speed, mm -hmm. propellers, more pitch and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and I think so. While we were um, on our way up to that spot, uh, we stopped off. This is where the crackhead monkeys live, basically. Um, Gangster so, monkey. Crackhead yeah, monkeys. the crackhead baboons um, were there. So, so I'm like, well, I'm gonna. This is actually my five inch quad. So, I, I basically was like, well, whatever. I'll. I'll send up my five inch quad and just just power loop this one bridge. No, no, I, I was I honestly I just wanted to go check out this pagoda. Mostly I was like this little pagoda thing up here is pretty cool. Oh, wow. Um, let me see if I can make it a little smaller and it will maybe play back nicer. I don't know if it's even playing back right now. Yeah, there's some like magic incantation you have to do for this video sharing thing to make it play nicely. Yeah, it's a little that's, choppy. If it's that's a beautiful shot. Right, mm -hmm. it, it almost are on the top of the hill, nestled in the crook of a river valley. It's... Oh, thank you, Stephen. Thank you. There's even <laughs> like god beams as well of light through. <laughs> so, so yeah, so that so then I'm like, well, okay, I trust my quad this far. So why don't I just go a little further? Um, you're forgetting that you've oh, got your fire. Well, at least at least we know you you're showing us GoPro footage now, which means yes. only one thing: we'll come back. you were able to find yeah. it. But you know what? <laughs> what I realized was like when I went to when I got to this point, I was like, "This is a looked, found SD card, mate. This ain't go. We yeah. found this." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I suck. I, I can't do this shit. Recovered, about? recovered this. Yeah, from but another I wish... another drone. Dude, you'd never when get I, when, it back in there. Look, oh, he's no, dead. no, That's, no yeah. But but when I look back at it, I'm like, well, shit, dude. If I went to where I went to, why didn't I just go to the very freaking top there? Like, I, I was basically there. I could have done because it. Because then you'd probably have lost it. <laughs> yes. So then, so then I was like, okay, well, I'm I'm coming back now. Um, where am I again? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I see the or I, I saw the orange. I'm like, okay, that the orange is there, so that's my point of reference. Um, One bridge, and, two uh, bridge. Yeah, weird Canadian uh, guy standing on his own. Check, got it. <laughs> Mate, I've done that fight. before. Fly, fly so far, and then you turn around and go, uh, what way? Where yeah, yeah. And this is no GPS too, but I, I only flew in one direction. I only knew like I, mm. I, I knew I, I knew which way I was going, but um, nice. 
the river's there. And then I'm like, okay, check out the pagoda again. And oh, yeah, that's what do you do? Spin around. Um, and then they must have some I think, crazy storms. If you look at the size of those rivers, like, oh, when yeah, the, it looks when like the, it gets when the water's deep. high, it yeah. must be oh, savage. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and I, I really wanted to freestyle that bridge, but I'm like, that wouldn't be responsible. I mean, this one I probably could have power looped, but I probably would have lost video going low. Um, but I would honestly, I a lot of these packs, I'm just playing it safe. Like, I'm not trying to be a dickhead in a foreign country. You know what I no. mean? Like, yeah. Like, to, in a way, I'm already kind of a dickhead enough doing this shit. But yeah, be nice I did, and make friends. Yeah, I, I did get. I did get my permission and I got my app. My application was approved. I like none of these flights were illegal. So that's good. I mean, but that, that um, is just lovely. The statue of the Buddha in front, I mm, guess. I know. I know. So wow. then I, I think I was getting around because I'm on 4S. So I was getting around like maybe 14.4 at this point. So I'm like, all right, I go up to this little top of this little part of the hill. And then I think then I'll call it. A, I'll call it there. But it's just it's beautiful out there, man. Mm. Like the the one thing i will say the the mountains or the hills out there they're not the same as the kind of mountains in canada or or what you would typically think as mountains they're very um they're very green they're very hilly and they're not like super steep i guess they're more round i guess than anything um but i guess i don't know they're they're very they overlap a lot too so it does make line of sight a little bit tricky um I'm gonna yeah, go I was getting this on my big TV in a minute. Yeah, so so basically, I'm coming in for a landing. My battery's getting low, and uh, oh wait, okay, turn around. I'm like, no, oh, I'm over here. Actually, okay, yeah. Um, but the crazy thing was, I come in for a landing, and let me see. I'm taking forever to come in for a landing. Come on, the baboons, Nick, the... your drone, and roll. Well, no, dude, you know what? Okay, watch this. So. I come in for the landing and and uh, I, I land right in front of myself and you'll see the people I was with, they almost like someone stands up and is kind of like looking over behind me. And and uh, look, so, dude, I had to run and grab my quad because a baboon literally almost ran and stole my fucking drone. dude. <laughs> like like a baboon was running full force when I landed my quad and they wanted to come and take my quad. And it was like, so it's a yeah, crackhead thing. They would have. They would have been like, they would have taken a bite of it, been like, this isn't food, and I've thrown it. They're thinking, yeah. break to the porn shop, like... sell it, get some donuts. Yeah. 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 So that, that was, uh, that was pretty funny. Um, so yeah, that's, that was basically, that, that's a small little uh, peek into into some of my flights out there, but there's definitely nice. a lot more. That's and fantastic. I got mm -hmm. to push the range. I got to push many, the range. How a many bit. have you uploaded to uh, your tube? Uh, just two so far. Just the just the one where I'm trying to reach my goal of getting to the top of that peak. And then just the one the first morning where it's all foggy and stuff. So you've got some more to come. Mm -hmm. I should have at least another 10, another 10 videos. You want to round this long, off with long range over water yet? Oh yeah, big time. There's there's a lot of cool stuff coming. I I, I know we're over the hour, so I, I can't probably show much. I, I can't show anything else, but maybe in the in the coming weeks and stuff, I can show you guys. Well, more. Uh, there's always the Patreon, so we can always hang out there for a sec. Yeah, yeah I was going to say you want to round it off with a thanks to all the the people that have helped you with the build. It sounds like you've had a fair bit oh. of assistance. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, so first off, I want to say. Well, thanks to to Prince FPV. He's the one who gave me the the, the frame, which is the Falcon Rad uh, Rad Lion seven inch. Um, so shout out to him for that. Um, let me see. Uh, shout out to Alexander Fedorov for helping me with the uh, you know that uh, return to home throttle <laughs> position uh, setting. Uh, who else? I I always Jack. I always like forget in these moments. Well, yeah, Jack is. Uh, that, that goes almost goes without saying. saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> I wouldn't even be flying quads if it wasn't for Jack. So, like, yeah. Um, and I'd like to thank Cole for editing my video because if it were for him, he <laughs> no one would see it. No it's one like, would see. I helped the quads. Ago. He, he <laughs> edits the footage that no one will ever see. Yeah. Uh, well, I feel like that's the case for everybody in this hobby, man. Nobody watches our videos, man. Like, <laughs> I watch it. Well, I just yeah, mean in we general. We watch our like, own videos. It's just one continual circle 
video watching event. Mm. Oh yeah. Well, and, and I've I've actually kind of come to the conclusion, and I'm, I'm sort of to drag this out here, but correct me if I'm wrong, but in a lot of ways, this hobby is kind of a selfish hobby because really it's kind of all about you in a way. Like it, there is a community, there is a, a fun aspect of flying with friends, but at the end of the day, like you're doing this because you want to do it. And it's like, you get the satisfaction out of your flights, out of your videos. And it's like, who cares if other people like it? You know what I mean? I think the I message is clear. Next time, bring some treats for the baboons. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It is, it is very like focus and the sort of weird sort of like look on yourself, but it is like a sort of like forced meditation out of body yeah. experience you go with. But you know, there is a community. We're friends. Wouldn't have met like Tony and like chatting to Stephen about ELRS. I think it's really important that we like all reach out and sort of like chat with each other and. Yeah. And try and remember that we wouldn't be here without the people who, you know, originally wrote the code. You know, they wouldn't be here without yeah. MultiWe or KK2 or TimeCop or uh, Dominic Clifton, Clean Fly, Alexander yeah. Federoff, Kiss. None of um, it would be possible without mindfulness yeah, yeah. for nerds. That's what I yeah. think. It's, it's like meditation or mindfulness for nerds. That's what FPV <laughs> is. You know, yeah. and that's it. So, uh, fact, and we wouldn't be live without our lovely patrons. If you're listening to this and it's all been cleared up and you don't have yeah. to listen to Cole swear twice during the episode. Um, that's all right, buddy. You, you were the one doing twice. the main chatting. That's illegal yeah. in Canada. I know. Rats. Naughty foul, Matt. If I was there, I'd wash his mouth <laughs> down. So um, thank you. Man outside your door right now. Yeah, thank you uh -oh. to all our lovely Patreons. Uh, we're going to head over and do a bonus Patreon thing, so maybe Cole can show some footage. Uh, you've been joined by uh, the man with the moustache, Stephen. Cheers. Have a good week, everyone. Catch you next time. What? Wifey. Bye. I've been bright till I fly, and also my buddy, Cole. See ya. Thank you. Good night. What do I want? Bye.